So Tim, I'm going to throw our second question over to you. And it's, a, right. it's a question that you mentioned a lot of scholars have spilled ink on Sheol. <laughs> Shall we say there are some very strong opinions on this next question, which we got to see the first time we met each other firsthand. Yes. Um, which I'll tell in just a quick second. But um, the question is asking, I've heard the angel of the Lord is like a pre-incarnate Jesus in the Old Testament. So listeners, if you've heard that view before, Old Testament scholars tend to have very strong opinions, yes or no, on this. And we were unfortunately, Dr. Tim and I, in a class where a student came up and voiced his view, not knowing that the teacher had a very strong opposite view. It was a very awkward 15 minutes in class uh, during the feedback section, <laughs> but um, we're going to try and make it less awkward, less difficult. We're going to try to bring light, not heat here. So Dr. Tim, can you walk us in on the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament? Yeah. So is the angel of the Lord Jesus? Uh, and just to kind of situate the question a little bit, you know, Brian, a popular way of approaching the Old Testament, especially in the last probably 20 to 30 years, but even before that, is trying to, to understand what was Jesus doing during the Old Testament period. And of course, when we say the name Jesus, that's being anachronistic, right? When, when we speak of Jesus, we're really speaking of the pre-incarnate Logos or uh, you know, the second person of the Trinity before he took on human flesh. Uh, but in right. any case, Jesus will work for shorthand. What was Jesus doing? And a lot of times people will look at the Old Testament and say, oh, here are the prophecies of Jesus or, oh, there's these shadows of Jesus. Uh, but was Jesus himself actually at work in the Old Testament? And so some people will say yes. And they'll say the prime example of that is the angel of Yahweh. And so here's, I, I want to give them their, their defense. Why would someone be able to say yes? And, and here's why. The first thing is uh, we need to recognize the word angel, malach in Hebrew, it is not a word uh, that has connotations of creature as we normally think of it. Uh, immediately we hear angel and we might have a vision of a fiery being or wings or, you know, maybe a diaper and a harp if we're really, you know, out there. But that's that's <laughs> not what the Bible talks about when it refers to an angel. The word angel just simply right. means messenger. And of course, those later associations have come into it, but that's not what the word means. So we can't just say, oh, well, angel immediately means created, which means it can't be Jesus. That's not true. It means messenger, at which point we could even translate the phrase the messenger of Yahweh. Um, so that's just kind of a, 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 a prerequisite to the conversation. But the second thing is, as we look to the angel of Yahweh, we see a lot of very interesting behaviors. Uh, the angel of Yahweh does things, and this is what's what's so important to think about, the angel of Yahweh does things that no other angels are allowed to do. So here's a, a for instance, very mysterious passage, interesting pas passage in Judges 13. And uh, Judges 13, you have Manoah, who is Samson's father, and then Manoah's wife, who's unnamed in the text. And uh, there's this man slash angel being who comes. And at, at first, Manoah's wife sees him. And then she goes and tells Manoah about this encounter. Later, the angel comes and Manoah sees the angel. He's identified as the angel of the Lord by the text itself. Uh, and, and then as the, the story progresses, Manoah actually offers a sacrifice to the angel, um, and the angel seems to accept the sacrifice. Uh, now, as we think about that, angels, even as messengers of God, it, it seems very odd that they would accept sacrifice. Why? Because we have instances, for instance, in uh, the end of Revelation, where the angel says to John, I'm, a, I'm just a fellow servant. Don't bow down and worship me. Well, the angel received worship. People bowed down and worshiped him. People offered him sacrifices. And rather than pointing to God and saying, only worship him, he seems to accept them. Um, also, and this is very interesting as well, uh, the angel speaks for Yahweh in the first person. And there are numerous examples of that. In fact, uh, these examples are so common that sometimes we don't even associate them with the angel of Yahweh. For instance, in Exodus 3, the angel of Yahweh speaks to Moses from the burning bush. And the angel says, take your sandals off for the place where you're standing is holy ground. Uh, same thing in Genesis 22. The angel of Yahweh speaks from heaven and he says, don't 
kill your son, Abraham. Uh, and we so closely associate the angel's words that it says the angel spoke, but the angel speaks as Yahweh. Um, so those, those are things that might be explainable if we think, okay, yes, a messenger can speak for the person they're representing in the first person in the same way that, say, a herald might speak for a king and says, the king says thus and thus. Uh, but it, it seems particularly acute when it comes to the angel of the Lord. And then the other interesting detail here, which could be, you know, kind of evidence in the case that it could be Jesus, is the idea that the angel of Yahweh is never named in the Old Testament. Now, you might say, okay, well, wait a second. We only have the name of two different angels in Scripture, Michael and Gabriel, right? And you have both of those, uh, Michael and Gabriel, in both Testaments. But as we think about Michael and Gabriel, we say, okay, well, almost no angels are named, so why is that a big deal? And here's why it's a big deal. Because there are arguably two different passages in Genesis 32 where Jacob wrestles an angel and asks him his name. The angel refuses to give it to him. The word, by the way, angel is not used in that passage, so there's some debate there. But then also in the passage I mentioned in Judges 13, Manoah specifically asks the angel of the Lord his name. And here's what the angel says. He says, why do you ask my name? It is too wonderful for you. In other words, he doesn't say, oh, well, my name is Michael and I'm an archangel or my name is Gabriel and I stand in the presence of the Lord. He literally says to Manoah, you would not be able to comprehend my name. And then we read in Genesis 48, and this is such an interesting passage, Brian, 48, 16, where as Jacob is recounting his journeys, he actually says of God that God has delivered him the angel who has brought him through all of his trials and travails. So there's arguably an identification of the angel of Yahweh with Yahweh. So there is the evidence for. Now let's just talk briefly about the evidence against, and it's pretty simple. The evidence against is, well, guess what? There are different passages that clearly differentiate between the angel of Yahweh and Yahweh himself. So Zechariah 3, the angel of Yahweh says to Hasatan or Satan, the Lord rebuke you, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Uh, so he invokes the name of Yahweh. Same thing in 1 Chronicles. Uh, there's an instance of the angel of the Lord holding out his sword over Jerusalem, and Yahweh speaks to him from heaven, and he says, hold back your sword. So uh, as we think about this textually, there's a lot of different things going on, but clearly the angel of Yahweh in the Old Testament is a herald of God. Uh, he may not be create a created being based just simply on the language, and he does some things that no other angels do. Uh, by the way, the, the idea of Jesus being the angel of Yahweh was something many of the early church fathers held. Uh, so there's some at least precedent in Christian history. But I think one thing that's so important, wherever we might land on this question, uh, is to remember we're not talking about uh, a pre-incarnate incarnation. Uh, and I'll explain that. Mm -hmm. We have to preserve the incarnation. Jesus became a man in a very different way than, say, angels appeared as men in the Old Testament. Uh, Jesus took on humanity. That's why, by the way, he didn't come as a fully grown adult. He came as a baby in the womb. Why? Because he assumed humanity fully in the incarnation. Uh, so is Jesus the angel of Yahweh? Uh, it depends on what day, I, uh, what side of the bed I wake up on, whether I say yes or no. Uh, I think it's very possible. There are very strong reasons to believe the answer is yes. Can we be dogmatic about it? I don't think so, but but there are the two sides to that case. Yeah, that's that's well put. Um, this is something that I don't think, A, theologically is significant enough to be dogmatic about it, but mm -hmm. uh, B, the, the evidence, I think we want it to be always one or the other, right? It's always mm -hmm. just an angel or it's always pre-incarnate Christ. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't think, I, I'm with you, Tim, I don't think we can get there. There's just too many things on both sides here where you go, yeah. no, that seems to be beyond just an angel. But then you have the clear examples in Zechariah uh, and right. Chronicles where it's distinct from Yahweh. So, uh, yeah, really well put. Uh, the, as you were talking, though, I thought it was interesting when the angel talks to Manoah and says, why do you ask my name? My name's mm -hmm. too glorious for you. He doesn't mm -hmm. add the my name is too glorious for you, but he back in the Jacob story also mm -hmm. says, why do you ask my name? 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So anyway, that just came to mind. It's an interesting connection. Um, yeah. I've always read that as because you should already know my name, uh, mm. at least in the Jacob story. Interesting. Anyway, but yeah. uh, good points. Thank you for walking us in on that. Appreciate it. Yeah.